Father, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you because where we would be and where we we have been if not for you. Look at how far you have brought us. Look at how far you have brought us. You have shown us grace. You have shown us mercy. You have shown us your favor. You have answered our prayers. The lift up of our head, we're grateful. And Lord, once again, we're here to fellowship, to be encouraged, to be deepened in our faith. I'm praying that everyone here will live with an encounter of the Holy Spirit. We give you the praise and the glory. Cause the questions in the heart of your people to be answered. Jesus, name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's get into the word of God today. Let's get into the word of God today. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you please turn your Bibles to John chapter 11 in verse 1. 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 And let me tell you a quick story. Um, some time ago, we were trying to employ someone, a house staff. We were trying to employ a house staff in the house. And, um, you know, so, you know, just the way we'll do we'll have him come to the house and just do some you know just you know just to interview and you know and all of that so i remember that i just walked into the house and um you know my wife was kind of continuing some practical interview for this particular staff and as soon as i walked in i could perceive in my spirits and i'm just talking about the issue of spiritual guidance i just knew that this guy had demonic issues I just sense a very strong demonic presence around him and you know I looked at my wife and I said that um, I said that you know I said we can't employ this person and she was like oh what's wrong I said that he has demonic issues and I mean that was the end of it but I said that to say this a lot of people have employed house assistants that have demonic problems either they are directly possessed or they are facilitators for demonic activities. And I'm grateful to God that I could actually perceive that. I could actually perceive that. And I'm saying so. I mean, and that would be, you know, it's not as if it's a normal thing for us. We've had several house staff in our house. And this might be maybe the first person I would ever say that this person has a demonic issue. So it's not as if every time they say that this has a demonic issue. No, 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 no. But I'm talking about the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The guidance of the Holy Spirit. How the Holy Spirit just guide you. Because when that kind of person comes to your life, you don't even know the amount of damage. They, you'll be going into extra damage, damage control, which meanwhile you could be in damage prevention. Glory to God. Well, that's so we glory to God. So let's turn our Bibles quickly to John chapter 11 verse 1. John chapter 11 verse 1. The Bible says, And a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary, and his sister Mary, and his sister Martha. And it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Verse 3. Verse 3 says, Therefore, a sister sent unto him, saying, Behold, 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 a sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, him who you love, a whim without lovers is sick. Verse 4. The Bible says that, And when Jesus heard it, he said unto him, This sickness is not unto death. So, uh, let me just stop for a little while because it's a very, very strong place. This sickness is not unto death. He realized he was sick, but he said, This sickness is not unto death. I understand that you have some delays, but this delay is not unto death. I know that the doctor said some things, but this report is not unto death. This setback you are facing in your business, this setback you are facing as a family is not unto death. Jesus was very, very emphatic. There are people under the sound of my voice. You have gone through a particular loss. You have gone through a particular challenge. You have gone through a particular setback. And the word of the Lord to you today is that this is not unto death. Let me look at him and say, this is not unto death. I may not be able to explain how you will come out of it. 
I may not be able to explain when you will come out of it, but it's certain that the setback, the health challenge, the marital issue is not unto death. He said, but for the glory of the Lord, meaning that it's not going to kill you. It's going to somehow work together for glory. It's going to somehow work together for transformation. It's going to somehow work together for a bigger celebration. If you believe, shout amen. Amen. That amen needs some help. Shout three hallelujahs. Two. Three. You must always remember that. When something happened, this is not unto death. Maybe you are bidding for a contract and the contract doesn't fall. You say, this is not unto death. Maybe you maybe maybe you are believing for a pregnancy and instead of getting pregnant, you see your menstruation period. This is not unto death. Glory to God. Maybe you got a rejection or disappointment. This is not unto death. He said, But this is not unto death, but for the glory of the Lord, that the Son of God might be glorified. The Bible says this. Let's keep reading now. This this um, verse 5. The Bible says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when he heard he was sick, now this word is confusing. When he heard he was sick, I thought if you love them, you will just get up and go and do something with them. He says, When he heard he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then he, then afterward, he said to disciples, Let us go on to Judea again. Question Why did Jesus Christ, knowing he was sick, stay back two days? I thought he would have gotten up, he would have advanced, he would have gone there immediately. The Bible says he stayed back two days. Now look at the next thing. The Bible says this, and his disciples said to him, when he said, let's go to Judea, he said, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee there, and you go there. Then Jesus in verse 9 told us that when they say his friend was sick, why he didn't move? What did he tell us? He says, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man in the day, sorry, if any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of the world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there's no light in him. What Jesus was saying was this. He said, when they said Lazarus was sick, I had not gotten the signal that the road was clear. Are, are you getting it? He said, when they said Lazarus was sick, I had not gotten the signal that the road was clear. So he was saying to them, he said that, he said that if I had gone that time, I would be going in the night time. But now it's time to go. I go in the day. Sometimes God wants you to do something, but the timing is different. Because he must need to go, but he needed to go at a different time. The most challenging part of the scripture is this. To imagine that Jesus was limited by guidance. If Jesus said that, my God, I can't just get up and go by myself. I had to wait to be led of the Spirit. I want to ask you, which of us should not be led of the Spirit? See what it says. Let's read again. Let's read again. Because they were asking him. They said, this place you are going to is dangerous. What is going on? And the Bible says this. This is what Jesus Christ said. He said unto them, and Jesus answered verse 9, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not. Could it be the reason why you stumble in business is because you are walking at night? As soon as it is an investment, you jump on it. But he says, he that is, see what he said. He said, I did not 12 hours in the day. If any man walks in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeketh the light of life. And if a man walks in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. Then you know what he said? He said, let me tell you plainly, verse 11. Lazarus is dead. And I want to just notice something. Eventually, you know the story. It turned out to a bigger testimony. And why am I saying this to you quickly here? The reason I'm saying to you, and this is why guidance is important. Because without guidance, you'll be walking in darkness and without light. You are here, you want to make a decision either to move from real estate to oil and gas. You need guidance. You are here, you want to make a decision either to leave Nigeria or stay in Nigeria. You need guidance. You are, when you are thinking of marriage, you need guidance. You are trying to make this very good investment. You need guidance. You need guidance so that you don't stumble in darkness. So that you don't stumble in darkness. Let me give you an example. If I'd gone, if my, if I'd gone to watch a movie before, a nice movie, and uh, 
maybe maybe my I've gone to watch a nice movie, and um, eventually I took my wife also going to watch the movie together. And during the course of the movie, there's a favorite actor of hers, you know, and the, the guy got into a situation where it was as if he was going to be killed. Now I was like, oh, how are you going to kill him? Hey, hey, oh my God, would they kill him? I start shaking. And me, I'm not shaking. The reason I'm not shaking is that I've seen the end of the movie. So I know how it will turn out. The reason why you need guidance is that God has seen the end. He knows how it will turn out. You are wondering why you are shaking and he's not shaking. He is not shaking because he knows the end from the beginning. So follow the person that knows we. Oh my God. I say follow the person that knows we. Glory to God. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 in verse 15. Jesus needed guy. Jesus said, you know what? Jesus said, and remember, Jesus was going to heal the sick, not going to make money. He still needed guidance. This is the Son of God. Who? This is very challenging. Like the whole concept is very challenging for me. So this explains the reason why a lot of people's efforts are wasted. He says the labor of the foolish would yet every one of them. He said, why? Because they don't know their way to the city. Without guidance, labor become wasted. Without guidance, labor become wasted. You will just find yourself doing so many things. You will just find yourself involved in so many things. Without guidance, labor becomes wasted. So the question is this. As you are taking key decisions in your investment, as you are taking key decisions in your company, as you are taking key marital decisions, as you are making all this very powerful decisions about your life, where is the place of guidance in this? Jesus Christ said that he that will walk in the night will stumble because there is no light in him. Are you making the decision with light in your spirit? Look at Isaac. Isaac was going to go down to things were very tough. He was going to go down to Egypt. And the voice of God says, says you should not go down to Egypt. There are always two categories of people. Number one, there are people like Joseph. Until they move to Egypt, they cannot prosper. But there are people like Isaac. They must stay in Jerusalem to prosper. Someone was asking me, say, Pastor, what is Jabba movement? Won't you Jabba? I said, have you not seen the Bible? Act of the apostles. The Bible says when persecution hit the early church, the disciples scattered. And what happened? And the apostles remained in Jerusalem. I says, We apostles, we don't scatter. We remain in Jerusalem. So you didn't hear Peter, James, and John scattering. Mm, apostles remain in Jerusalem. We found our scriptural heritage. So there are, there are things that there are things that don't entice me. Like they are they, doing green card. You spend six months here. I don't even have a dream of such kind of things. Not that because it's not wonderful, but it's not just in my pathway. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Without guidance, effort and labor will be wasted. He said the labor of the foolish man weary every one of them because he does not know the way. He knows what he wants, but the way, and this is why guidance is important. You can have vision, but the way to achieve the vision is guidance that gives it to you. Guidance is the bridge between vision and manifestation. Guidance is the bridge between vision and manifestation. I can see it, but guidance is a bridge between vision. So, on one hand, there's vision, on the other hand, manifestation. Guidance is the bridge between vision and manifestation. Nothing boosts confidence like guidance. There's nothing that boosts confidence like guidance. There's nothing doing something you know God says you should do. Look at Acts 27. Let's turn there quickly. In the book of Acts. Oh, glory to God. Chapter 27, verse 25. Acts 27, verse 25. The Bible says this. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. They were, they were going through a sea, a, a sea mishap. There was like a sea. Um, there was like, they said, we have a plane crash. Their ship was at crashed. Paul said, hey, wherefore, sir, be of good cheer. 
I believe it shall be even as you told me. Paul says, I can't die here. You don't understand. The angel has told me I will testify in Rome. So no matter what will happen to this ship, I cannot die here. There is a way you hear God. You know that ah, this thing cannot end my life. Glory to God. Uh, someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Hallelujah is weak. Let's shout three hallelujah one more time. One lady got married, she was about 40, 41, thereabout. I said, How did you how did you cope? I said, How did you cope when you were, you know, when you were single? He said, Pastor, a lot of people wonder why I was not worried. I said, Why are you not worried? He said, Because when I was about 30, 32, I saw a clear vision. And God showed me my children, God showed me my husband, God showed me what we're doing. He said, So in the waiting period, when everyone was running Elta Skelter, I said to myself, It's I must marry marriage is concluded because i've seen what i would do with them the reason why you are fearful is that you have not seen the future nothing just confidence like saying god said i remember long ago this guy i, I went in the midweek service and there was a word of knowledge and said there's someone going for some interview the lord has granted the victory this is many years ago when our ministry was very small we were still in spoon feeders probably about 200 people or 100 in midweek service there was this guy that was going to the U.S. He had gone for the interview. <laughs> and it was very funny. You know, and he came. The, I heard from his testimony. By the time he got to the, um, the, the consulate, he went for the interview, and the man said, I'm sorry, I can't give you a visa. He said, he, he said, interview, excuse me. He said, my geo told me you will give me a visa today. He said, you will give me the visa. <laughs> and the consular found it very amusing. He was amused. He said, who said I will give you a visa today? So he recalled the whole process. I was in church. And the voice of God came. And I knew it was for me. He said, that's why I came in confidence knowing that you gave me a visa. Long and short. Because I looked at him. I said, I'm just impressed by your confidence. Come back in two days time and pick up your passport. I, I said, there's something. No, no, no. no. Oh, you will not give me oh, I mean. No, no, no. So there's something about confidence. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Confident. Look at how Elijah confronted the prophet of Ba. He said the Lord, he said the Lord that answered by fire. Let him be God. Why? Because he heard God say call that fire. He didn't just go on assumption. He heard God say call that fire. David looked at Goliath. He said this day I will bring down your head. The Bible says David had no sword. But there's something about hearing the voice of God that boosts your confidence. He would say, ah, this real estate. He said, no, 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 no. I didn't just enter real estate. Though. I came with a word. Though. It was a word that brought me here. It was a word that brought me here. I remember we were going to do the first NLP two years ago. No, last year. In the UK. COVID was just, COVID was still around. I called the UK past some of my UK friends. I said, I want to do this. They said, there's no way it can succeed. I said, thank you. I went back to God. Did you say go? I said, go. I said, the opinion that matters is the opinion of God. The people that said could not succeed, they came back and said, my God, thank you for challenging us. Sometimes God wants you to do the impossible to inspire what the faithless. Someone say Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Guidance is very powerful. Guidance will shatter fear. It will shut. People wonder, why are you not afraid? And that's why I said, it's hearing the voice of God that makes you a voice in life. It's hearing the voice of God that makes you a voice in life. People wonder why you are so bold. Why you are so confident. Because I had something. I didn't just come. I didn't send myself. I had something. Praise God. When we're fewer than this, we're talking like this. Because I heard something. Because it's the voice of God that makes you a voice in life. You have not heard this voice. That's why your voice is not loud. It's the voice of God that makes a voice in life. 
please and please and please can you please make a decision not to joke with guidance can you make a decision not to joke just to step back if Jesus could step back who am I not to step back oh glory to God it's the leading of God that makes you a leader it's the leading of God that makes you a leader because as, as a leader you can see father so it's the leading of God that makes you a leader It's the leading of God that makes you a leader. Look at Peter. Just a very shaky, fearful man. Follow me. Just following guidance. He transformed from being a follower to a leader. Oh, glory to God. I said 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 glory to God. And just in case you know you don't know no one graduates from the school of guidance no matter how spiritual how wise how old you are there is guidance at each level no one graduates from the school of spiritual guidance we we as we grow we depend more in fact the more you grow in god the more you realize that the race is not to the swift that the battle is not to the strong that it's god that shows mercy let me give let me tell you the truth when you're a young christian eh, you are deceived Either when you are young in age or young Christian, you are deceived that is kita <laughs> kita. I love the way someone said it. Is it kira kira kita or is it kira kita dollar? You not say change. That's a kira kita ko dollar ko dollar. It doesn't dollar. Kira kita doesn't equal dollar. Kira kita doesn't equal dollar. I'm telling you the reason why is that you just see people from nowhere. They will take one decision. Grace will stay on it. Their life will explode. Yes. I'm telling you, just one decision. That life will explode. And you will see people that have been working on it for years. Nothing has changed. Glory to God. Huh. And the reason why I said so is because it's, it's, it's guidance that guarantees backing. It's what? It's guidance that guarantees backing. I get back in you know, oh oh do you have backing? Yeah. Do you have backing? Yeah. You, you get into an English source I will show you. It's like me, I get back in you know, oh oh I know they walk alone. You are in the plane and the plane is doing this and this and this. Everybody say, hey, don't like that just say i get back in you know. oh i know they walk alone nothing guarantees backing no than guidance what did david say david said though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death thou art with me i'm going through the valley of the shadow of death thou art with me he said my confidence is not the doctor my confidence is not my bank account my confidence is that you are with me he said now prepare the table for me in the presence of my enemy he said the enemies are there but they can't touch me he said this is my table you know what some of you say God keep my enemy for what why how would they see his power God needs to make your enemy alive so that they can know that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, he's not their mates. Hey, balante kabalanto kabaya. So he says, so what does he say? He says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence. My enemies are there. My table was prepared. They could not touch it. I sit down and eat it. They can't touch me. Why would a powerful God need to kill them to walk on my life? God says, let them be there. See and change your mind. So they will now say, with all we did, you got married? They say, with all we did, your children succeeded. They say, with all you did, you mean, you, with all you did, you are, you are a billionaire? With all we did? With all we did, you have a child? You will not tell them there's no name under heaven than the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah! Glory to God. Die 
guidance is what turns a wanderer into a wonder guidance is what turns if you don't have guidance you just wander and mingle through life guidance is what turns a wanderer into a wonder Saul was wandering a long life when guidance came anointed with oil in one day the wanderer became a wonder there's something about being guided that makes your race fast that makes light shine on your path that makes you the center of attraction the way Malachi calls it he says you shall become a delightsome land everybody loves to help you that's the work of guidance when you are guided into it you are guided into it other people struggle for it but you are guided into it other people labor for it but you are guided into it other people are scheming for it but you are guided into it oh wow Glory to God. People say, why do you have the right word? I'm guided to it. He puts the right word in my mouth. Why are you so smart? It's not my smart. I'm guided to you. Why did you choose that career? Why did you choose that career? Why are you so smart? Why did you do this and this? I'm guided to it. Your word is just due in season. Guidance is very powerful. Though. You will hear a voice and say, as you're going today, make sure that you are very kind to somebody. Are you wondering? Kind? Ah. And the reason why God says that is this because one of the things that provokes favor is kindness. Many of you are praying for favor, but favor can be can be programmed, can be arranged, can be attracted. One of the ways you provoke favor is by showing kindness. And you just begin to help people, and you don't understand that the people you are help and the conduit for your favor. So you just you just be greeting her. You, ah, good afternoon, good afternoon. You are so always respectful. You don't know the woman you are greeting has a younger brother, a younger niece that is not married. All of a sudden, goes to me, come, come, come. There's a girl that greets me a lot in church. She's a nice girl. You didn't know that your greeting is the seed for your marriage. Praise God. Many of you, the voice will be telling you, this gate man, give him money. Buy him lunch. 2000 5000 give him you say what about it is he not being paid i'm not gonna have some cut the day your name appear on hr list is that gate man that you were is that gate man that you were helping that will come and say auntie come let me tell you something i've seen your name is this auntie that wants to remove you is this auntie that's for you if you can talk to them now are you, are you getting me talk about guidance it's not about big things i mean it can be big things but there are small things that god will tell you to do glory to god i remember when i was in school i think i was in year two i just had that thing that grand city lecturer i'd known him but i never get to see him as i went to see him he said ah, that's good i'm just marking your class scripts right now i said ah, wonderful he said what's your magic number again i told him he looked at say oh he said you failed He said, you failed. He said, I've not added your contest but you failed. He said, well, because you are here, because I think I literally got like maybe 19 over like 50 or something like that. Maybe like 19 over 50 or 60. He goes, I'm here. He said, I would like change this. So he just took his mind and just said, nine. you know, it's one nine. He just added four. <laughs> like that. that. He, no, he just, call, he just, he just thought of the closest thing to convert the 19 to. <laughs> he said, that's it. I just said, what about if I didn't go at that time? Many of you, the voice will say, Oh, yeah, I need to pray. You say, mm. <laughs> Meanwhile, that is the time they're discussing your application in Microsoft. <laughs> I'm telling you, because why is he asking you to pray at that time? You don't know. Guidance, guidance. 
guidance, guidance, guidance. Some of you, there's a, there's a thing to pray and you're praying and it's about your child. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. So let me give you just one major principle about guidance. I'm going to the channel of guidance. One principle, one of the things you want to learn about guidance. Most times, guidance is progressive. What does that mean? Most times, guidance is received in chunks or in parts. You don't receive the entirety of guidance at once. And this is why a lot of Christians get into trouble because they run with half word. All they heard was kill Isaac. Stop, don't kill. They didn't hear. Are you here? I'm telling you, most times Christians run with half word. Are you ready for me today? Let's look at the Bible. Let's read First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse nine. It's just something very powerful about God. First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse nine. How Christians receive the word. He says, "For we know in part." So sometimes when God is coming, it comes in parts, and we prophesy in part. What does that mean? The fact that you saw her in your dream does not mean she's meant to be your wife. most believers I, I, I just saw in my dream but that's not enough that might just be the first step of relation so eventually you went to daytime you guys broke up you messed up you broke up the relationship two years after she became the head of contract uh, of procurement for unilever and that's where you're meant to get contract from you not get there bam you saw her you remember all the things you have done she said ah you are here you yourself you know it's over you not go and pray you say lord have mercy god says I told you to build relationship like two years ago for this time, not to date, but for this time for business. He said, But you went to date. I said, Lord, I messed up. You messed up. But the reason why you went to the world, as soon as you went in the dream, every woman you see in your dream is wife. Every man you see in your dream is husband. But the reason why is that you don't know. So watch this now. You must listen to this. Guidance. The moment you just dreamt and saw yourself in Canada, you say, Hey, Maria Tamana, Toronto, here I come. Ah, Toronto, here I come. Toronto. You don't even know what Canada means. That maybe God is sending you funny from Canada. You know, with Toronto, to, ah, Toronto, ah, Toronto. Here I come. Praise God. So you must realize something. It says, We know in part, and we what? So, most times, we receive guidance in part. Let me show you some examples how we receive guidance in part. Look at Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Acts 8, verse 26. Let's, let's look at some examples. Acts 8, 26. Let's look at it quickly. Because I wanted to learn something very specific today. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip, Let's read one to go, saying what? Arise, go down to the south, unto the way which goeth down from Jerusalem together, which is deserted. Verse 27. Go ahead. And the arrow. Question, did God tell him what you're going to do? He just said, Arise. So he said, Ah, if he's a single boy, arise. Hey, ah, she's there. So they will get there, they'll be looking for her. Meanwhile, God is sending them to a man. He said, Arise. You know, sometimes the reason why instruction comes in small bits is to see how trusting of God we are. That can you trust when you don't fully understand? Can you what? Trust when what? We don't fully understand. And that's the question. Can you trust when you what? Don't fully understand. See what the Bible says. God told him. All he told him was arise. Go. You, you just prayed and you just saw yourself preaching. Ah, I'm called to the ministry. I'm starting a church tomorrow. I'm starting a shop or a church tomorrow. Question. The fact that you saw yourself preaching. Is that what it means? And many people have done premature ministry because of this. Because they've confused that vision to mean they should start something. But when God talks, it's in part. So more, when you receive God's instruction, it's in part. Look at the, look at the case of, um, of, of Peter, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, quickly. Acts chapter 10, verse 17. Let's look at that. Acts 10, verse 17. Even look at the case of Samuel. God told Samuel, he said, go to the house of Jesse. I've appointed, I've appointed one of his sons to be king. Is that not what he said? Why didn't he tell him it was who? David. When he even got there, he even made mis- wanted to make mistake. He thought it was Jesse. 
Why didn't God just tell him everything? Go there, the youngest son, who is David, is the king. Sometimes we receive guidance in parts. So don't hastily make a mistake by interpreting guidance based on part revelation. See what the Bible says, Acts chapter 10, verse 17. Bible says, and now when Peter doubted in himself, he had seen a vision. What the vision meant, which he had seen should mean. Then the voice, then then men were sent from Cornelius house that made them cry for Simon's house and so before his gate. I'm just jumping. Verse 18. And called and asked whether Simon, which was summoning Peter, was lodged there. Verse 19. Verse 19. The Bible says, Why he thought on this, why he thought on the vision, the spirit said to him, Behold, three men seek thee. Verse 20. Arise therefore, and get that and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing for I've sent them. Did he tell Peter what he was going to do? He just said, Go. So some of you are here. The reason why you have not gone is that you are waiting for more instruction. Sometimes you will not get more revelation until you obey the last one. Are you hearing me? You will not get more. So it's when you have taken a step of faith that you will receive more revelation. And some of you, you've got your revelation and you think it's the entire revelation you have gotten. Glory to God. So you must understand that guidance is progressive. What's progressive? Here a little, there a little, here a little, there a little, here a little, there a little. And this is a mistake of people. Number one, there are people that have not taken a step on what they've heard. And that's the reason why they have not received more because I went for everything. And they would have concluded that what they heard is everything and have got into error. Praise God. I said, praise God. So let's begin to close this. What are the channels of spiritual guidance? First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. So for example, I have a telephone here. I have my mobile phone here. My mobile phone is here. And on this mobile phone, I can receive phone calls. I can receive WhatsApp calls. I can receive SMS. I can receive WhatsApp SMS. I can do um, FaceTime. I can do all of that on the phone. So are there channels? So, so basically, the phone communicates in three ways. It's either going to be a text or what? A voice call or the last one is what a video call the phone is mirroring the spirit because the spirit also communicates like that so in the spirit there's video call there's voice call and there's sms what's video call in the spirit we call it vision vision when you see yeah because video call you see so in the spirit see what the bible says in first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 so in the spirit there are four dimensions the first one is it, as it is written that's the text message version how does God speak? As what? It is written. It's a text message version. It's a chatting version. The second one is this. Eyes has not seen. That's what the video call version. Then it says ears have not heard. That's what the audio. Then the last one is a deep one where it says this perception or witness where it says it has not entered into the heart of man. So you can hear God by seeing, by hearing, by what? Perceiving or by reading it's written oh glory to god i said glory to god so hearing god can be seen hearing perception or it is written for example one way you need to know you hear god is this you hear god through his word for example when you read the bible do you feel as if god just answered your question god just spoke to you Sometimes you come for a service and it's almost as if they told the pastor your case. He will just say something, bam! He answered the question. God just because God leads us by his word. That's what I'm going to. God leads us by his word. Oh, are you ready? Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Are you ready? Then Psalm 119, verse 105. See what it says. He says, we have a more sure word of prophecy. What was he referring to? He was referring to the word of God. God leads us by his word. Said Psalm 119 verse, Psalm 119 verse 105. Psalm 119 verse 105. I want to say, Psalm 119. I want us to hurry now. Psalm 119. See, it says, thy word is a lamp to my feet. When he says, your word is a lamp. Lamp means what? Lights. He 
he says is a light unto my path let me give you the passion translation give me the passion translation that, that's very powerful it's very explanatory the passion translation he says it says true shining light guides me my choices and decision did you hear that he says your word is a true shining light that guides me so sometimes when god wants to lead you just reading your bible you can find guidance just reading your bible he says and that's why if you don't read the bible you can't find guidance he said true shining light guides me in my choices and decisions oh look at the next thing the revelation of your word makes my pathway clear just looking at the word of god he said your word is lamp unto my feet and light unto my path he says i read my bible i can tell what to do i can make better decisions not just as you read the bible also as you hear prophet messages like this you are being guided how does god guide us through his word that word is light unto my feet and light unto my parts that word is lamp unto my feet and light unto my path the reason i don't make mistakes is because your word is light unto my feet and light unto my path that's why every morning i get to the word of god because the word is light and lamp praise god you know why Bible study is important? Pay attention. Someone says, how do I know the voice of God? The voice you hear in Bible study is the voice you will hear. So, the way you get acquainted with the voice of God is to get acquainted and familiar in Bible study. So that when you hear it outside Bible study, you can know it's the same voice. How will you know the voice of God if you have not heard it somewhere before? Praise God. So, the last thing is this. How do I... How do I begin to make myself available to hear the voice of God? Habakkuk chapter 2, and that's where I'm going to close. How do I begin to make myself available to hear the voice of God? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. Are you there? Are you there? Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. So someone says, you know, I, I, I'm in between transactions. I want to go spiritually. How do I hear the voice of God? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. See what the Bible says here. Are you ready? Yes. Let's read together. I want to go. I want to go. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon my tower I will watch to see what it will say did you notice the word of God comes to people that watch the word of God comes he doesn't come to that a Philippians he comes to people that watch Ooh. what is watching when others are sleeping why other people are there you, they're like what's going on he says i've learned to watch i've learned to watch the word he says, he says look at what habakkuk said habakkuk said the posture of receiving is a posture of watching he says waiting precedes oh waiting precedes revelation waiting precedes revelation waiting precedes revelation waiting precedes revelation the question is this you want revelation but can you wait you want revelations but can you wait can you wait can you wait businessman can you wait can you wait look at all that's going on in your life look at all that's going on in your family can you wait I know you can talk but can you wait God is not a busy body God is not a gossip he talks to people that can do something about it in prayer God is not a busy body he's not a gossip he talks to people why will he tell you about your mom why will he tell your friend he's going to die if you will not pray about it why will he tell you about Nigeria if you will not pray about it why will he not tell you about things and not pray about it so God is looking for people that will stay in prayer before he talks they will wait in prayer and they'll be like oh I, I perceive something I, it's 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 this happened and when they said this happened they, they don't just talk they know how to oh god the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob hey that's what it means to wait you want to hear god speak to you about your children wait 
you want to hear God speak to you about the future of your son of your daughter wait you want to hear God speak to you about 2024 wait you want to hear God speak to you about your future wait he said they that wait upon the Lord they shall renew their strength God talks to waiters God doesn't talk to players God talks to waiters God talks to waiters you have to wait brother you have to wait the year is coming to a close a new season is unfolding this is your waiting time God is looking for people that I will share information with will he find you it's time to wait God is not looking for people that talk a lot on social media God is not looking for people that tweet a lot God is saying that I'm looking around I'm looking around I'm looking around where are the people that can wait you are wondering what's happening to your marriage can you wait you are wondering what's happening to your business can you wait because they that wait upon the Lord shall we say he said I will stand upon my watch Habakkuk chapter 2 and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what you will say he said I will stay here until they say something Hosanta Kabalaba. We behold until it form. We behold until we are formed. Sing it for me quickly. We behold until we are formed. And not take our we behold until we are formed. We are not going anywhere, people. We are not going anywhere. Others may go and have McDonald's. They may go and do shopping. They may go and do it, but we behold on that. Oh my God, my God, my God. We behold. We behold until we are We behold. We cover, we cover until we We cover, we cover until we We behold. Amen. You are on the we are, we we are gradually stepping to a new year. Have you heard? Has the curtains of the spirit been drawn so that you can see into the superlunar? Have the dimensions and the portal of the spirit been opened so that you can know how to position yourself? Or are you going to run next year like this year? Atala Nasata. Lord, I want to see. Lord, I want to hear. Let's stand up, let's pray.